Well, hello everybody, Steve Green here with another Real Talk from Iron Vegan. Stay tuned. Well, hello. I want to do a little talk about strength imbalance uh, in the pectoral, the chest muscles. The other day, I was watching a young uh, YouTube bodybuilder, a natural bodybuilder, way to go, um, and he was talking about different things that he's seen in the gym, and he was, uh, one of them, uh, the things that he's seen in the gym that were um, not really wise to do. And one of them was a guy doing bench presses with a different weight on one side than the other, trying to uh, make up for some strength and balance. And so you don't do it like that. Uh, you don't put different weight on one side of a bench press Olympic bar than you do the other because you could hurt yourself. So what do you do? Okay, it's, it's common that uh, people are not the same exact strength on one side of their body than the, as opposed to the other side. So what happens? Let's say you're doing bench press, for example. I'll, I'll use this 24-pound body bar as an example, all right? So say I, I have an Olympic bar here and I'm bench pressing. Well, so you're bench pressing along and you're keeping the bar horizontal, level, but then as you work up towards your maximum amount of, uh, a bit of strength, sometimes what happens is, and it happened with me, and it happens with, it's, it's typical. One side, uh, for me, my, my left side was not as strong as my right. So I'd be doing a really heavy uh, lift, uh, maybe, you know, the last uh, rep or two, and I'm trying to get it up, and you're pushing up, and my right side was stronger, and I would actually extend, get the right side up before, and then I would be struggling to get that left side up. And you know, you can usually do that, but it, it's not going to work out in a balance. You can't, if you're pushing up, and this side gets up first, and then you're just really struggling, you got a spotter there, you know, in, in case you, you don't make it. But, so how can we, so the question that uh, came to my mind, and, and this, uh, this fellow that I, I watched the other day, this uh, young 20-something bodybuilder who lives in uh, uh, Florida, he, uh, he didn't actually answer how to um, speak to or solve that imbalance. He just said, keep using progressive overload. Well, that's not going to do it. You actually have to train your mind to... Uh, to do that. and So how do you do that? Well, okay, my right side was stronger. I'll just talk about my example. Obviously, I can get that up. And then, can I speed up my left side? No. When I'm down there in that position, and I have a really heavy weight on the bar, and I'm pushing up, my right side is stronger. Can I speed this side up? No. Obviously, if I could speed my weak side up, it would have been level. So what can I do? Well, I can't speed up my weak side, my left pec, which is, it was strong, but it's not quite as strong as my right. 
But what can I do? I can slow down my strong side. Okay, so I'm benching along, let's say, and normally I would get into one of these things with an uneven push and then a struggle to get this side up. Okay, so what happens is, what do you do is, when you get down to that last rep or two, and, and you know that's going to happen because you're really driving yourself to the limit. This is when you're pushing yourself to the limit, okay? Um, so you're pushing up, and right now, you know, this side would start taking over, but what do you have to do? You purposefully slow down your strong side, in my case, my right side, I slow it down to the same speed as my left side over here. And I purposefully keep this uh, going up no faster than my left. And it's, it's frustrating because you know you have the power to just drive that right side out perhaps, but then this is doing this and your, your bar is crooked. So you get to that point where you know it's going to happen and you purposefully you don't let the right side go up any faster than the left side is able. And by doing that, you can keep the bar level and that's what you need to train yourself to do. Now, I think it took me one to two weeks, somewhere in there, you know, 10, 14 days or whatever, to where that became second nature. And it became a psychological thing, it became second nature. So during that time, you wouldn't be continuing to uh, work on your progressive overload as far as the weight, because this is a, just figure it's going to be a two week uh, time to retrain your mind and get the strength of your, of your weak pack, in my case, the, the left pack. It's not that my left pack was uh, uh, weak or underdeveloped, it certainly wasn't but it just wasn't quite as strong. I had some imbalance in there. Who knows, maybe it wasn't strength. I don't know, my left side, I'm right-handed, maybe that had something to do with it. But anyway, so I stopped concentrating on increasing the weight during that time period, a couple weeks or whatever it was, somewhere in there, and I concentrated on this idea that I don't let my strong side go up any faster than my weak side can do. So my my weak side starts to, starts to give out here, I purposefully stop that strong side from going any faster than that weak side can handle. And by doing that, I can control my strong side. You know, that's not a problem. So I, I do that, and then I keep the bar level. Now you can, you can keep the bar level immediately um, this, the first time you try this technique, because obviously, um, I mean, you may not make the lift if your left side wouldn't have made it anyway, but the cases I'm talking about for me, I would be doing like one or two reps, um, like maybe have a, do a one rep uh, personal max, um, you have a spotter, and um, so you're, you're, you're putting out your absolute maximal effort when this happens. I mean, if you're just doing 10 reps and setting the bar down, uh, you know, most people set the bar down before they max out anyway, but I'm talking about uh, not sub-maximal work, but absolute maximal work to where you're not just working to 85 or 90 percent of your one rep max, you're, you're working all, all the way to 100 percent until you, you, you don't have anything left. And that's how you correct that imbalance. You slow down your strong side to where it um, matches your, your weak side, the imbalanced side, and before you know it, 10 days, 14 days, whatever, it, it, it doesn't take long. It, it, you, probably, you maybe can get that figured out and squared away in a week, I don't know, but uh, it seemed to me like it took me a couple weeks. It's been years ago now, because um, I, I had been lifting a little over 20 years at the time, I've been lifting a little over 50 years now, but I remember doing that, and I trained it, well, I was training at Bill Pearl's gym during the 1970s, and one of the top name bodybuilders at the time said, hey, you know, you need, to, you need to square that away and here's how you do it. So I took the guy's advice. I stopped worrying about increasing my, uh, my, uh, my um, uh, personal uh, best uh, during that two week period, got that squared away, it became second nature. And for all the years after that, uh, while I was still bench pressing, 
uh, I never had a problem again. Uh, I don't bench press anymore with with Olympic bar, or I rarely do it. If there's a Smith machine in the gym, you know, I like using a Smith machine um, or, or an Olympic bar or bench, but I find dumbbells are, for me, they, they work better. They uh, um, bring more muscles into play to keep it all balanced. I just like the way they feel, and I feel I get a better development because on a bench press, when you come to the top, okay, your arms are no, your hands are no closer together. They just go up like this. Well, the actual, the actual movement of the chest is to pull across the midline like this. As you pull across the midline, you can feel the pectoral flexing. And the farther across the midline of your body you pull, the, the, uh, the more you can feel that. Um, and with dumbbells, you come up and you can actually bring them closer together. So your hands are moving in together. And that's that's why uh, eventually um, I went to uh, dumbbells exclusively. Um, oh, by the way, the uh, natural bodybuilder I was talking about uh, who lives in Florida, his name is Scott Herman. He has a YouTube channel called Scott Her Herman Fitness, and he's a pretty sharp guy. You know, he, he knows quite a bit. He doesn't have all the answers yet because um, he you know, doesn't have all the experience yet, but, but he gets most of it right most of the time. He didn't... Uh, say how to correct this imbalance in the bench. He showed a bad example of uneven weights on there, uh, but he didn't have a solution that would actually work. And so I, I left a quite lengthy uh, descriptor on his, his channel uh, trying to put into words what I just showed you here. And so I wanted to make a video about it because I, I realized that it was important because a lot of guys and gals will have these imbalances and so what do you do about it? You just, you just keep benching like this? No, you don't do that. You're going to end up hurting yourself. You're gonna I've seen guys drop weights off on the floor because they, they, get, they get that strong arm up like this. And if they don't have collars, and not everybody uses collars, then there go all your Olympic plates on the ground. So anyway, that's how you fix that, Scott, <laughs> and anybody else that might have that problem. Hope this helped. Well, thank you once again for visiting the channel. If you like it, be sure and subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you know when a new one comes out. And remember to live long and finish strong through bodybuilding for health and longevity. See ya.